Okay, well, uh, anyway, uh, let's get started and talk at uh, uh, Cloud Native Postgres, running PostgreSQL on uh, Kubernetes. And compared to some other talks, especially talks I had so far, uh, I will be talking at uh, a little bit higher level, so uh, hopefully that uh, uh, will be uh, helpful. Uh, and let me start by talking about the elephant in the room, right? And I don't know, uh, don't mean an elephant like an elephant in Postgres, uh, I mean AWS in this case, <laughs> right? Why I think it is uh, important, right? Well, because if you think about the running databases, and not just Postgres, the databases in the cloud, right, they are really driving a lot of uh, expectations, right? If you feel uh, a lot of developers and you want to compel them to use the uh, platform which is running on Kubernetes, you have to probably deal with them well. We have been uh, working with AWS Aurora before, right, or something like that, right? And then uh, that is what uh, drives our expectations, right? And that is, of course, like a self-service. In many cases, they uh, have uh, uh, experienced what uh, uh, Amazon calls like a fully managed, uh, right? Like, so they don't have to care about, uh, you know, a uh, number of things. Typically, that also means uh, they have this kind of uh, number of uh, uh, operating modes, right? they can use graphical user interface, APIs, or kind of uh, CLI, right, to deal with their uh, solutions. Uh, the integration is uh, also very, uh, very important, right? Like in this case, you can see that a lot of uh, uh, services in Amazon talk very well uh, with each other, right? Like for example, you can get like a backups on S3, right? To use uh, the Amazon authentication and uh, security integration and, uh, and uh, so on and so forth, right? And I want to uh, highlight that because I think if you look for, for uh, data on Kubernetes, and uh, um, you know, PostgreSQL in particular, that is, uh, has a lot of problems for us to, to solve, kind of. I think we have to say thanks to Amazon in this case for sort of like a really defining very well the good portion of roadmap we can, uh, uh, we can follow. And I think some of those uh, solutions are solved uh, right now pretty well. Uh, others, I would say like a not so well, right? For example, if you look at uh, all that, like a serverless uh, concept, right? Well, uh, maybe not, uh, not that much, right? Or uh, the other challenges you can see, uh, uh, such as uh, uh, separation of a storage in compute, which is kind of hard to do with Postgres, which does not directly have that in its um, uh, architecture. Well, with all the good stuff, uh, what uh, uh, Amazon has been doing for Postgres and other databases, well, all that stuff is, uh, of course, like a highly uh, uh, proprietary, right? And it brings us a lot of usability and convenience, but it also comes as a great cost. And that cost does not only mean, well, what uh, uh, some of those solutions uh, get, uh, uh, you know, pretty expensive, and uh, that kind of cost, right, the difference between what the compute resources cost and what Amazon chooses to charge for RDS, and especially is Aurora, has been increasing with every uh, next uh, uh, generation, right, of, uh, of uh, instances, but that's also cost in terms of login and then, uh, 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 and then uh, 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 the, you know, uh, cost which, uh, comes with that because if you don't, or well, you have a single choice, you don't have a choice, right? And that uh, uh, can be a problem. Now, I have highlighted a lot of uh, the features, right, which come out there. And if you go and read what the features various databases on, on or Postgres, Aurora, right, and Amazon offers, there is quite uh, uh, a lot out there. But there is also some good for all of us an open source community, which comes from Pareto Principle. Anybody knows what it is? Pareto Principle, okay, some of you may know that also as a rule of 80-20. Uh, 
right? Well, reality is what if you think about the like, mature technology, as we are, you know, I think, getting out there, then vast majority of the users of developers will use kind of small um, set of features. For me, I think that is very interesting reminding kind of a flashback from the start of our, uh, my career. I started at, with database at MySQL. And I remember, I think that was like in early 2000s, our CEO, Martin Mikus, would say, well, you know what, the database the feature war is kind of over. Right? For a lot of stuff, hey guys, you know what, you don't need to use the Oracle. Right? Which, of course, have like a gazillion of features, right? Some of them we still don't like have present in the open source database community, right? But for most use cases, you know, MySQL, right, what obviously was focused at the time, right, or, uh, or uh, Postgres as just, you know, good enough. And I think the same applies uh, with the databases uh, uh, and running database on Kubernetes. For most use cases, uh, the solutions we have right now is, uh, uh, is uh, good enough. And as I said uh, already, the, uh, Amazon has provided us with a fantastic uh, roadmap, right? And I would encourage all of us uh, in the community, you know, shamelessly steal good ideas, right? And implement them uh, uh, in, a, uh, in open source. Now, with the cloud. Uh, something else I wanted to mention, I think there is, a, uh, which is quite uh, valuable, there are essentially two ways what we can uh, use the cloud, right? And uh, I think one of them, uh, and that is where a lot of the cloud vendors uh, like to preach, is this kind of like a highly differentiated way to, to use the cloud. If you go and uh, look the Amazon's, for example, well-architectured architecture, right, and stuff like that, they're not going to tell you, hey, guys, you know what, you just can, should you run, uh, run Postgres on Kubernetes, right? They're going to tell you to run Aurora or maybe DynamoDB, right, or things like that, because guess what? The more you are locked in with the Amazon services, the more money they make, right, then the harder for you is to, uh, to kind of to, uh, to do the switch uh, if uh, you want it, right? What is to do in uh, your interest, of course, is uh, rather to use their um, cloud native solutions, which, well, this conference, not another conference happening kind of in the end of the next month, uh, uh, is uh, is about, right, where we can use the cloud as a commodity infrastructure provider because it's kind of wonderful, right? We don't need to rack our own, ser our own service, right? It's right, providing us with kind of uh, dynamic capacity and such is uh, fantastic and use Kubernetes, uh, right, and other cloud native solutions uh, or open source to give us uh, value. Uh, and I think what is interesting is that actually brings us to the cloud as Amazon uh, used to imagine and promote it, right? So if you look at this slide, that is actually from one of the old presentation of uh, Amazon, which we did not, uh, uh, at the time, right, that people didn't know quite what the cloud was, we compared that to the electricity, saying, hey guys, it doesn't make sense for most of us kind of to run our own generators, right? It just better to get electricity from utility, right? Well, uh, makes sense. But I think an important thing about the electricity and that what works uh, well, uh, because it is commodity, it's totally standardized, right? If you think about your you know, laptop, your TV, your microwave, they can run with any electricity uh, out there, right? Where, where Microsoft, oh, oh sorry, Amazon, uh, <laughs> Who cares? We say it's the same shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, the Amazon uh, uh, case, uh, then they say, well, if you now choose to uh, run your generator, well, you have to, you know, you can't use your laptop, your microwave anymore because they are only uh, ours, right? Which I think it doesn't make sense, uh, but Kubernetes. Uh, and related solutions give us uh, what we uh, looked for. Okay, so uh, the next thing which comes with, uh, with Kubernetes is uh, the stateful, right? With the data on uh, Kubernetes uh, room, right, we are obviously all convinced on the Kubernetes is a good solution to run stateful workloads, 
right? But unfortunately, not everybody believes that still, right? And it's kind of very uh, uh, interesting, right? As the Kubernetes made itself a name as solution for stateless workloads, it's actually very hard to convince people, oh, now we can do a stateful for, uh, as well. For me, that's also kind of a deja vu, right? Because, you know, in the MySQL environments, the first thing the MySQL became famous for as a database which doesn't have transactions, right, from, a, from a, uh, 99. And that was indeed the case. And then, finally, MySQL started to support transactions. It probably took a decade for people kind of to internalize that, right? But I think what we are here as a community, both at kind of hump, right, and the increasing number of people uh, believes what that is uh, uh, now feasible, right? So that is uh, great. Now let me touch on uh, some, of the, uh, some of the data. And I just had to update uh, this slide earlier today, right, as this uh, as a report was uh, released. The fantastic news, what we see is uh, obviously there is more and more adoption of uh, data on Kubernetes technologies for, uh, 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 for uh, databases in particular, but also other stateful uh, workloads. Now, one thing, interest in the survey is uh, there is kind of a limited set of uh, questions so we don't always imagine, but from a, so this is kind of from the earlier survey. But that was also very, uh, what I use a lot to uh, promote running databases uh, on, uh, on Kubernetes uh, is this, right? It's not only what people are doing that, but also what significant number of people are happy about the outcomes. Right, because in some cases, you know, people are doing that, but you know what they say, oh my gosh, we read this, you know, like an analyst's advice, we did it, and now, oh my gosh, we better uh, uh, haven't done it, right? And there is also uh, a lot of a growth uh, in uh, the databases uh, as, uh, uh, on the Kubernetes as we know. Okay, now from a high level, let's go uh, a little bit to talk about running PostgreSQL specifically on Kubernetes. Now, when you think about the, uh, getting the database run on Kubernetes, there are actually like a multiple you know, high-level ways to do that. You can actually you know, grab a PostgreSQL container, you know, put it in a Kubernetes, and hey, you kind of have a database, right? And if you just want you know, to connect to a database, run a couple of trivial queries, right? Maybe use it for a test, that would work, but of course, that is not uh, the way to run a database in, produ uh, in uh, production. You can also use Helm, uh, right, the charts to deploy uh, uh, the container. That is uh, also uh, not uh, really uh, helpful. Where what you want to do if you run the database is to use the operators, wherever you deploy them directly, or you use a Helm to deploy them, or you may use, let's say, some other software which deploy, deploy the operators, but you want to use that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, solutions, which is uh, operator, because uh, that can provide you a full cycle of a management of a, a database, uh, of a databases. Now, how databases are special compared to a lot of applications, right? If you think about the, mm, you think as a developer and deploying a lot of your stateless applications, you know what? If things kind of go wrong, you can you know, always tear it down and uh, deploy from scratch, right, or again. And that is actually what we often do, right? Because uh, immutable containers, right, that is like really the, uh, the good, uh, uh, practice uh, uh, to provide those days. But that is not how things work with data, right? If you kind of wipe out your database and then deploy empty database from scratch, right, then you want to do it, well, that would not quite work uh, for your business, right? Uh, at least in production. And then that is a thing with a, pro uh, with a production databases, they spend most of their life like, in what we call like a, you know, day two, right? Day one, that is when we, what we call about like provisioning and initial configuration, and then you set it up, and then your production database kind of just go on and leaves for years, you know, sometimes uh, 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 even, uh, even decades. 
And then you have to do a lot of stuff. You have to do backups, you have to do scaling, upgrades, you will have some failures, and you have to do self-healing and all that kind of stuff, right? And you know what? And if you get installed like a just POSIX container, you don't get any of that. That is something which operators uh, provide for you, right? And I think the quality of the operator is exactly how well are they able to do that, right? And that is also their quality of operators comes in how well they're able to do that in those kind of a 0.1% cases, right? Because that is where most of the challenge uh, comes, right? And I think that is where uh, I would say the, uh, a lot of testing and the broad adoption uh, becomes helpful. Now, another argument I often use when I'm convincing people to use a database on Kubernetes is what, you know what, if you look at a lot of database as a service solutions those days, they are actually use the Kubernetes on the back end, right? Maybe they're no, not talking too much about that, right? And you know what, for the end users, it looks kind of similar to Amazon RDS, not a kind of uh, Kubernetes UX, but it is underneath, and that means uh, two things, right? It means it's kind of possible, and that is also possible with uh, uh, low overhead, right? Because they wouldn't be able to, you know, to do it if it would uh, be too much overhead. Uh, uh, for them, and also with uh, 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 you know security availability, uh, right, which is good enough for uh, for their customers. Okay, next, let me uh, go uh, and talk quickly about the, uh, uh, the the choices, as I kind of I think uh, not have too much time. So there is a bunch of operator uh, choices uh, which exist uh, right now. Uh, let me start by mentioning cloud native uh, PG, which uh, I would say to be frank is a, like a leading uh, operator uh, those days, which has a very robust feature set. Uh, I, in particular, like uh, the, uh, website documentation and onboarding ex experience uh, is uh, uh, fantastic. And I also uh, want to provide this graph uh, about the changes, right? We can see what there is like a lot of work is going on, and that's a pretty uh, uh, robust. Now, if you think about the uh, previous choice for community, that was the Lambda PostgreSQL operator, right? That is uh, pretty much, I think, the, uh, the first operator which came uh, into the picture has uh, also uh, a lot of features. I think they have especially a lot of focus on specific support for AWS uh, in, uh, uh, EKS, but uh, in general, it has been losing ground last uh, you know few years, and I think that was uh, interesting, right? If you can compare how much activity going on in development of that operator, you can see it's a lot less uh, compared to cloud native uh, PG. The cool thing to mention about the land operator is also they come uh, with uh, uh, their uh, uh, the GUI, which is uh, yeah, quite cool. The next operator uh, uh, to mention would be also crunch data. PostgreSQL operator, which also has been in the market for quite quite a while. It has some you know cool features like additional plugins for time scale or or PG admin. The tricky thing with this operator is what while operator itself is open source, right? It uses the images. Right, which uh, which requires subscription from uh, uh, from uh, from Crunchy, right? Uh, uh, right, which is this doesn't give you quite completely open source uh, experience. Uh, Stagress is uh, another uh, operator for uh, Postgres, which also has been. Uh, in a while, the interesting thing about this operator, it's also implemented in uh, in, uh, in Java, and it uh, really has a, uh, a very robust uh, um, uh, graphical user interface, plugins, right, and even some you know cool features you may not expect in the operator, like uh, uh, like benchmarks, right. Here is also the uh, GUI uh, example. Uh, and last, I also want to mention uh, our uh, operator from uh, 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 from 
uh, from Percona, right, which is something which was initially based uh, of a crunchy operator. Now we implemented a lot of uh, features uh, in uh, that uh, out there. That also has uh, uh, a lot of integration with uh, other Percona uh, tooling in uh, ecosystems such as uh, Percona uh, monitoring and, uh, uh, and management, uh, as well as uh, similar UX to the other operators we have, right? Like, um, or, uh, like if you're also running MongoDB or um, uh, MySQL, it has a very similar uh, stuff. And for us, uh, uh, we have a lot of, uh, we see a lot of growth in usage of the operator among users and customers, right? And especially getting some good uh, traction with some of the larger uh, enterprises. Now, uh, beyond the uh, operator, we also have a graphical user interface, uh, which is uh, called uh, Percona Everest, which is uh, used as a special a separate solution which allows you to deploy and, uh, and manage various database uh, operators, not only for uh, PostgreSQL, but also for uh, MySQL and uh, MongoDB, which I think is quite cool if you're looking for something like that Amazon RDS uh, uh, experience, I would uh, check it out. Then let me uh, also provide kind of uh, uh, this graph in terms of attraction of, uh, uh, of the operators, right? And uh, here uh, you can see what a cloud native PG is, at, at least by the star measure, is uh, you know really you know kicking everybody's uh, ass, right? We really got that uh, uh, you know four uh, uh, thousand stars, right? Uh, the fastest from all of them and have you know no intention of uh, stopping. Something else I wanted to uh, mention is this, right? What I think is interesting about the operators, all of them have you know, quite inter uh, interesting kind of a lot of machinery and moving parts in this, right? So if you are ever deploying the operators right, and want to see, hey, what is uh, inside and how those like a different components are talking to each other, I wanted to mention the, uh, the open source observability tool, uh, Karoot, which is quite uh, cool to really map, not just in database, but any Kubernetes infrastructure. But I know like for me, looking at different operators, hey, what components they have, how they took to, to, to each other, uh, has been a quite cool feature to visualize. Uh, uh, also, uh, of uh, maybe of uh, interest, uh, uh, our uh, folks at uh, community team at Percona came with this uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, timeline for, uh, for for databases. Right, there's like a uh, blog post out there. Right, if you kind of want to uh, read more uh, of the topics, uh, please uh, do that. Something else I wanted to uh, mention, which I think is very uh, relevant in the PostgreSQL uh, space is this um, uh, uh, Neon Postgres. Anybody heard about Neon? Yeah, I think they are uh, doing a, a pretty cool thing in terms of uh, supporting serverless, separation, sort of go, compute, branching, and so on. So a lot of those features which Amazon Aurora has. And this is very cool uh, open source project, and it's actually built around Kubernetes architecture. The only thing in this case is what uh, there is no right easy way to deploy the self-hosted version, right? They provide all the uh, software uh, out there as an open source. It's available in repository, but it's not something uh, easy for you. And what I would uh, look in this case for community, I think that's fantastic reference uh, as an uh, idea, and also that is also opportunity to, for community to step up and provide you know, uh, that uh, the infrastructure, right, if that's something what uh, uh, we want to have. Now let me finish up by talking about the challenges and the opportunities I think we have uh, in uh, uh, this space. Now I think uh, what the databases came to Kubernetes because the stateful sets and, you know, persistent volumes kind of uh, became uh, supported. But I think in this case, it's also very clear what that on its own is not really good enough, 
right? We can see, for example, cloud native PG operator uh, has built a lot of uh, functionality on, on its own, and I think that is a similar challenge as what a lot of the databases have. You know, Postgres, of course, but also database as well, and I think that is a very good opportunity for uh, us to see how we can cooperate right, among the different vendors building those uh, uh, data technologies out there. And there is probably more what can be built in a Kubernetes uh, right, versus uh, in, implemented in, uh, uh, in operators. Uh, there is also some opportunity for PostgreSQL specific issues, right? Like, for example, extension management. Right, like uh, right now, if you offer of extension and you want that to be available on different operators, you have to, you know, talk to way too many people because everybody has a custom. Right, I think it will be better for community to find a way how to make it um, it more standard. Or there are some other things, like uh, for example, speaking about users and privileges. Right, how we can uh, have those kind of in a more uh, in a more unified and uh, and standard way. There is opportunity out there as well. And uh, this is kind of my educated wish, if you will, and uh, uh, maybe kind of suggestion to a community, I think what we can do under this DOK umbrella is to see how we can have more uh, cooperation between uh, the database operator developments, not just PostgreSQL, right? I think what PostgreSQL <laughs> operator vendors specifically have a lot of things to, uh, to talk about, but uh, all other uh, database as well. With that, it's uh, all I had to say, and uh, thank you. I think I have a few more minutes for questions. And we have questions. Okay, thanks, Peter. I mean, what, thanks for you know covering all these things. What I see is that we are actually pushing database usage in Kubernetes where nobody done before, so we are learning. And so I appreciate you know, your call for more cooperation to improve not only Kubernetes, but also Postgres. So just that you know, on the extensions management stuff, we are working on a patch for Postgres 18 that involves also improvements in Kubernetes to um, improve you know, extension management and load extensions on the fly. Yeah. So I wanted to just, you know, you know, let I everyone think, uh, know that. I think that is, uh, uh, that is fantastic, yeah. Yeah, and, but yeah, as you said, it's all happening now, and it's important to have everyone's feedback. So thank you for the presentation. Very good. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else have a question for Peter? You can always find him afterwards. If not, we've got to get the next group up here. Okay, thank you so much, Peter. Appreciate okay. it. Okay, awesome. Thank you.